this topic, I have had opportunities of uh, presenting it about six to seven times in different uh, organizations and different parts of the world. I have spoken on this in Ghana, in Dar es Salaam, Tanzania, also in Kenya, where I was invited to hold seminars, and also in so many other churches in this part of Nigeria, in Ikodu, uh, in Sogo, some of these churches, Methodist churches, and so. Um, when the pastor called me that I would be giving this lecture today, I was like, why this topic all the time? Now, it showed me that God is interested in the head of the church, in the church of God being very healthy. Uh, I thought of using the slides much earlier, but I will not use it because the experience has shown me that using the slides for Zoom time. And I have just 40 minutes, therefore, I will not use the slides today. But talking about this topic, I will be looking at the church itself. What is the church? Two, the healthy church. Three, characteristics of the early church. And four, how did the church become sick? Number five, responses of sickness in the church. Number six, when we talk about the sick church, we want to look at how pastors make the church sick and how church members make the church sick. And then we want to look at the anatomy of the healthy church. We will be looking at the anatomy of the healthy church. Please do permit me. I want to record this because some people in some parts of the world want to. When we look at the, say, the healthy church, the word healthy church presupposes the fact that the church has been sick or the church is sickable, a host, that the church can become ill. A healthy church is a community of Jesus followers with shared vision, thriving ministry, and trusted leadership. Notice that this is a qualitative definition as opposed to a quantitative one. It's about quality and not quantity. So many parts of the world is like, I want to have a very big church. We want to have 50,000 seaters. We want to have 5,000 seaters, 100,000 seaters. But the question is, how many of the seaters are going to heaven? How many of the people you have in your church, are you sure they are going to heaven? Have you led people to heaven here in your church? It's not just about God of going to this church because I was asked to go tell it to this church. But I will speak generally because this is a church I have been in different parts of. This is how many people in the church, you are a pastor. How many of them have you led? How many are you leading to heaven? How many of them are you sure they are going to walk? They are going to heaven when they die. How many times have you got big altar calls? I said this question when I was asked to make this lecture. I said, let me read the question to you, the responses of people, so that you will see that uh, as it happened, you have to ask a question about Miliki. No advantage. Let me read this thing to you. Uh, this letter, this uh, questionnaire, I sent to about 180 people. This is the question. I am researching the anatomy of a healthy church with an emphatic concentration on charismatic churches across Nigeria and Africa. In less than 150 words, narrate your experience as a Christian, especially the mistakes and errors you see in the anatomy of your church, the members, and the leadership. If you desire, I promise you to approach or grant you anonymity when publishing my findings. Listen to what people say to me. One, thank you, Apostle On the average, I think some churches in Nigeria are doing well, but many of them are doing badly, especially churches in the southern part of Nigeria, where many of them are not straight and not called of God. Their parents call them, their pastors call them, and ordain them without due regard for spiritual process. 
This is by Apostle Matthias. Okay, sorry, I think that's a bit short name. This is a woman, Pastor Laura. I will talk about what I know. My husband was sent out as a missionary to Bida, and the church has abandoned him in Bida. They don't send money to him, no assistance, no accommodation, and you expect him to plant churches there. The Boko Haram and this is so high here that his family told him to return home that they can feed him. Why must Pastor Andy or Sir, oh, sorry, I want to show you. Why must Pastor Dash explain and employ pastors they cannot get up for? Is this not a sin in the anatomy that you are looking for? I have told my husband to leave their church, to leave their job. I am carefully employed and can take care of him. But he said, God called him. Now, so God will call. Two, number one, another lesson, another lesson. My general overseer often forget that members are watching them. Church members will hear what pastors say, but they will do what they do. Our pastor is not where to be found when service starts. He comes in sometimes during service. This led many members of the church to stay at home and come when they get the pastor as home. Pastor, why are you having home? In my church, this is another one by Mrs. Special. In my church, you find pastors moving around all the time. They are never settled. The pastor seats are often empty for the first one hour of the church service. Sometimes you notice that it is during service they will be choosing who is to pray or read the Bible. Our pastors are not prepared. There is a kind of instability in their planning. They don't know that many church members see them and know that they are not organized. Another one. In our church, our general overseer pastor is not prepared. All the sermons are alike. There is nothing new you hear, such that when I go home after each service, I go home spiritually hungry. Thank God that there are pastors online and TV to fill in the gaps for me. After a while, I started staying home. I don't think I need to go to church again. Another one. During our Founders' Day last year, our church service was interrupted by a man who knows his wife and her death was not announced in the church. Just some five Sundays later, a prominent member of the church lost his son in America. The church mentioned it and we were, we were asked to visit to show love to them. But when this man lost his wife, the, the church kept quiet. And the man felt why should the church be partial in treating members on equality? If you will not mention that, say on that. But why must we do it for some people and refuse to do it for another? This is from Chile Lobi. Number one, another one, the ages of Sapphire in the city. My observation in my church is that many of those who call church leaders don't attend church programs. You only see them in church only on Sundays. Bible class, prayer meeting, baptismal class, women prayer meeting, you don't see them. Another one, in my church, they ordain a deacon and my wife as a deaconess. We don't know our duties. I want to reject the ordination that my son will on me that I should not reject it because only important people in church are made deacons. Uncle Bola, she will know my attitude. The way he ordains just anybody as bishop is the way he ordains the things. I doubt if I am qualified to be a deacon, if the biblical standard should be followed. Amen. Dear Tony, Oluwa Kusheo. This is the truth of the Lord in the soul. Another one, people who are not born again are church leaders. They are pastors. They try to command and lead others. People with no salvation experience. Women who are not genuinely committed. This is from Pastor Abako Ocean. Our church here in Ibarra has become a transit camp. People come in and go. Our church cannot point at anybody they have led to God or made altar call in 10 years. They don't tell people to receive the Holy Spirit or speak in tongues. Our youth are not assisted to receive the Holy Spirit. No one helps anyone to connect to heaven. I am looking for a church where people come in. They ask the church people come in and stay and go. See, let me just leave it here. This, you will see that this issue is not only in one church, it's in so many churches. 
May God help the church in Nigeria. May God help the church in Nigeria. We are not doing it right any longer. Now, let me look at the characteristics of the early churches. That was where the church started. King Moshe. King Moshe in those early churches. So that people would see a prototype or the examples of the early church. One, the church was devoted to scripture. We are committed to prayer and ministry of the world. And the grass, you see, when you give the people the world, Christians know, they don't deceive themselves. They know where the world is being served. When the matter gets to a level, they will know that, hey, look, oh, the church said, I've seen the church and the church the church and the church and the church and the church Okay, you are so giddy. And that's why you see some people, they will tell you that. That's why you find some people who say, oh, they start, they start, they start, they start. What happened? Well, they are going to they start for about one month. They will find the God of Shemi, they start. And why you get there, you find the youth there. Many of them doing well there. And I can ask myself, why can't we replicate this? What they are doing here? Let us learn some good examples in different parts of the world. Let us learn from good examples of what the church was in the early days. But you can only give what you have. Yeah. Well, you don't even know, you don't even read your Bible, you don't even know what the early church was like. How do you know the prototype or the anatomy of a good church? Another level of it there. They were devoted to breaking bread. They broke themselves into cells. Look at it, the early church, what were they doing there? Many of them, they, they were moving from home to homes, praying with people. There's one man who responded to me here, he said that in their own church, if they find you going to someone's house, they will tell you that they are not one but sit there. They will tell you, if the pastor bring people together, say, let us be praying, there's one who listened. He said, in my church, I just felt that, he said, their pastor lost his wife. And then they felt that, would let us, Help our pastor with prayer. And then he brought some pastors and some members of the church together. What came out of it was that one Kola Mojo, one fellow that church slept. When what they wanted to do was upholding their pastors in prayer. No, this is not a healthy church. Another level of it is God, Jesus said, My house should be called what? The house of prayer. And kind of God of glory, this church is a house of prayer. We have that. We are praying that we are doing that. But when we pray, what do we pray about in our churches? We are praying. But a lot of people, you don't even know your prayer point. You come to church, you are praying just as just everybody is praying there. But you yourself, what is your prayer point? Do you know what is happening to you? And when you pray too, you pray in such a way that the devil intercepts your prayer. And that is why sometimes we need to pray in the tongues. But in so many parts of the world, in so many parts of Nigeria, they don't even encourage you to speak in tongues. Nobody even know. I look at it in the Bible, I said, how many of us speak in tongues here? I am not saying it is too much you have to speak in tongues. It is not a must you have to speak in tongues. But when you know the power and being in speaking in tongues, you will know that, look, this, I need to learn it. May the Lord give it to you. That gift in our tongue, may not give it to every one of you. Amen. Because when you do it, look, there is something about it. A lot of people say, they will say, oh, nonsense, nonsense. Hiroshima, Nagasaki, Sokoto, Abuja. No. Please stop giving the Holy Spirit. Stop giving the Holy Spirit. I'm always thinking that, oh, you know, no, pa. It is none of your business. I want to bank I want every result. Let us learn. How we can pray to one and concentrate in God there. There are about seven types of prayer, the intercession prayer, so many of them. Go and read about them online. You will see the why you need to focus on your prayer there. Let's look at another one that the early church was evangelistic. When the church was inaugurated, when the Holy Spirit came, don't forget, the Holy Spirit was there at the inauguration of the church. Many people don't know this. Jesus Christ was not a Christian. He was not a Christian. Jesus Christ, people saw other people who were 
behaved it like Jesus Christ. And they said, those people are Christ followers. A lantern of Syria. And that was when this entity was installed. Now, can people see you and say, you are a Christ follower? Let us look at it and leave the pastors alone. A me for Allah, me. Ask yourself this question. We must always ask ourselves this question every time. When we wake in the morning, we ask ourselves that question. With what I will do today, with what I did yesterday, if we always ask ourselves this question, you will always bring to yourself, you wouldn't be careful in what you do. The early church, what were they doing there? It was a reputable church. Everybody knew them. Look at it there. When they were going, when they were going, they would say, oh, these are Christians. These are Christians. What do you say about your church? On the internet, they have turned pastors to object of ridicule. To such an extent that when people see pastors now, it's like, ah, I'm on the, I'm not the pastor. The day I was to be ordained in my, in, my, in my school, the next people were saying that we are going to have that height. <laughs> because they just felt that everything about pastoring is of a height. I am not interested in time for us. I am not even interested in doing what I'm doing here. All I'm interested in doing is hold my pen and write. Not every one of us. But because of the behavior of some pastors, I will give you an example that I saw some time ago. A pastor, well, in my presence, what's the convention for? What do you want to do back? What do you want to do? What do you want to do? What do you want to do? I was sitting in front of him. There was another bishop at the back. And the little thing, I saw a man in that bishop. Pastor, what do you want to do? What do you want to do? What do you want to do? Okay. I thought he would make one from him. What do you want to do? The tithes are not still collected in church. These are things we see in the church of God. And yes, Christians, no, 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 no Christians all over the place. They will see God in front and kneel down before the Papa. Papa, pray for me. A man that is certain that this man who cannot see God. It is certain the man that cannot see God. Drop 
it here and the Lord will bless you. I'm talking about you when I was a little. I'm 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 a little. Because of the errors in teaching that has spread into the church. Pastors who are not trained. Pastors who do not know anything about this job, about what God has called them to do. They are not leading the church today. And once they can come to any Bible school, they have a PhD, they have a they have bishop, we have bishop, and we'll be throwing it all over the place. We are bishop. You are going to hear. It is not my pleasure to say the body is going to hear. Please, they need to go and reconcile themselves. Because so many of them have led people astray. And God is going to hold them responsible for the lives of individuals that will go to hear because of them. Let's look at another level of it. Christian seem to have only learned how to lay treasures on them because of this sort of lectures. The contemporary church today has their money driven. The biggest error we see perpetrated in the independent churches, so many Babalawo have melted into the church. Thank you, Pastor Martins, for that prayer we read last week. Remember that prayer? Yes, that many Babalawo have melted into the church. Many of them. And that's why they're just calling and just building anything. Things that are not by bleaker. Ladies and gentlemen, let us become brilliant Christians. Let us go back home, whatever you hear in church. Let us speak the Bible. You have your phone. Make use of your phone. Make use of your phone to ask questions so that you will see the biblicality of that message. Let us subject some of our decisions to test of critical analysis, rational analysis, and intellectual contradiction. Not just anything we hear in many of these churches in Nigeria or online are biblical. Let us be very careful. Let us be sensitive. We are not doing the right thing in many of the churches, and that's why the church is sick. The church is not just sick, the church is leprous. May the Lord help the church. We are going towards the end of time, and that's why the Bible says that even the elect will be deceived. I will not be deceived in that Lord Jesus. Are you reading your Bible? If you read your Bible, I will not be deceived. It's not a matter of mouth. It is a matter of, I read my Bible, I know what the Bible tells me. I tell you, no matter the only thing I hear in the church, I hear in my people, right? In Bible school, no matter. I want to know. There's some of these things there. Let's look at it again. Grieving the Holy Spirit, disobedience, condoning sin, evil, are things that we do in church that quenches the Holy Spirit. Someone misbehaves in church. Rather than call the person and rebuke the person, you don't even know that in the church of God you can excommunicate members of the church. Do you know that? Yes, We've done this in the Sunday school before. When it gets to a stage where you find that this is the only change, you can send the person out of the church. But in so many of these churches, I can say, because we want to feel this. Is. And what's there? Ah, you feel what I love. You feel what I love. What's there? And you are them to come into church to corrupt people who are in the church. All because you want to feel the space. And you want to stay. Leave them. In some churches, they are just looking at them. Look, I'm a friend in the ashore. I'm a dad boy. No, but tell me, please, Waka. This is not the only church. And they told me, I'm a naked man. I'm a strong man. I'm a strong man. Is it a lie? You know that in this church, no, this is not how to do it there. If you are going for an interview in your gas is that how you dress? How much more when you are coming to meet the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords? They know. But then we keep quiet. All because we want to feel this thing. We are not begging anybody to be Christians. After all, it is your life. If you die and you go to hell, your Wahala. Your Wahala. The resisting what will change. Because those are the challenges there. Let us even look at them leave them there. Let's right? look at the indiscipline in the church. Many of the church members will say, oh, church is here, you will fail on you. Time will fail on you. More can bury me. Time will bury me. Since you entered this church, how many people have you asked for? How, if you want to be friends, you need to be what? Friendly yourself. How many people have you asked for? You know, many of you are here, we may have, Monte Alonso, New York, it's a very nice. But then, if you don't come to 
church on Sunday is like, okay, come on, let me go to the church. Relationship is a currency. Let me tell you the truth. Relationship is an investment. It is what you sow that you will reap. What? Let me. I bet I mentioned this some time ago somewhere that there is nothing money can give you that relationship cannot give to you. I'm sure we have heard money. I'm sure we have heard money. At the day I'm going to tell you money can give you something that you cannot give to you. As many of you are not going to go for a long time, there is nothing that money can buy that relationship cannot give to you. If you know what it takes to conduct the right relationship, relationship is an investment. We have seen situations where someone will be doing bad day in in the Calabar, and they will leave Lagos and go there. You get ah, on she the home on she will buy. Now, if I tell you on she will buy in the Calabar, can the poor young people buy she will buy in the Calabar? She. And then you now expect people to give you what you want to give back. Life will give you what to give. Let us be very careful about the way we demonize the church of God. Thinking that ah, this church, you know, this is kind of this church, will give over and over again. And it will fail. There are so many of these things. I will just look at it. In some churches, poor organization, just like some people have mentioned here, they come to church on Sunday. Then you find that, that this lady said, the church, the, the pastors are not ready. They are one, they are yeah and yeah. The pastors are, that's when they will have a, if they must be, I will be, if they must be, I have said that in so many churches. Meanwhile, I had someone like a local in the Bishop of Ego, who told me that by Thursday, everything the pastor is having is ready. Everything in my service and by Tuesday it is ready. But in so many churches, we do it haphazardly. We don't care. A pastor will have a man and say, that is when we'll be looking for, ah, eh, there's a man who will be looking for what I was saying. When I was saying, there's a man who will be looking for what I was preaching here about, uh, about 10 years ago. What should we do? 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 The 
they will say, I have been fed today. I have had the word today. This word will last me for one week. So many Pentecostal churches we have in the land. They, do, they go to church by evening. That's the kind of church they will say, oh, ah, what was so? There's difference between preaching and teaching. Yes. Let's give the people the teaching. Teach them what to do with their lives. Teach them what to do with purpose. So many people are in the church of God. They don't have any purpose. They don't know where they're going to in life. Ask them, what do you want to do with your life? Summarize your life for me in one sentence. 80% of Christians don't do it. Say to summarize your life for me in one sentence. I want you to go home today and summarize your life in one sentence. Tell yourself, what am I going to do? In what way has the church assisted me to discover who I am? The Bible that you are saying, that very Bible there, all the philosophers of the world you see, they are things. They are pushed from the Bible. Every philosophy you see, every philosophy, from Socrates to Plato to Aristotle to Alexander to even have a of philosophy, my first degree, many of them, these people, they are things. They stole from the Bible. They stole from the Bible. And therefore, ask yourself, when I tell about that, am I, have I been fed today? How has the first service assisted me? These are the questions every Christian must ask themselves every time again. Now let's look at it again. The pollution of the second altar. I was invited to a program in one church. How people pollute the altar. It's a very beautiful thing for me that I see that our altar has been barricaded. And in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that altar will not be polluted. Yeah. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. We get to some churches there. And every there is no Sunday they will read in a comedian. Every Sunday they will read in a comedian. And the comedian will be on the altar. The comedian sacred things of our faith. The comedian was asking the people. How many inches be you show? Some of you can just receive my way. A thing you can never try with the Muslims. Sacred things of our faith. Issues that we look, let me tell you something. The birth of Jesus Christ is not as important as the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. That is the peak of Christianity. The, the only thing that was Jesus Christ did. He came. He died and he rose. If you check all the miracles in the Bible, the only miracle that was not assisted by man was the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Every other miracle there's always, there's always man, man sin to there. Resurrection of Jesus Christ is the only miracle in the Bible that had no assistance of man. And then someone will now come, pick, pick, pick me. I mean, do you see the other pick me? They said, P.S. You should start that back here. Uh, last year, it was a uh, standing bank. Uh, it rose like a bread. Because Christians will not talk. Because we have presented Christianity as a joke on the social media. What image of your church are you giving out to people? These are some of the challenges we have. And therefore, when people don't respect Christianity any longer, they will say that when they say Christian church is a church of reality. It will look as if there are one bias in there. You will go for your budget. What do you have to pay by? Thank you. I have 10 minutes more. Now, let me leave all this. Then we are going to talk about the arrogance of leadership in the church. When you go to some churches and they are talking to a seminar like this, some of the pastors will never sit. I went to preach somewhere in a, a service of God. I saw all the pastors seated. And they were writing, and was humbled. I was like, ah, Pastor, here, yeah, I want to make a call from them. I pick their sermons. I listen to them. Do not invite me, a small boy like this, to come to speak. And the man was writing. I told myself, Pastor, God will honor you. In so many churches, you go to many of the churches that Bishop mentioned them. You will not see them there. They will say, but you fail to understand that it is by example. Church members are not blind. They see you that if you don't respect this man, you do not respect him. These are the challenges we find in our church these days. The church is sick. But God will heal the church. Let me go. I have the Lord. I have over prepared. I'm sorry. But let us go to 
to um, the anatomy of a healthy church. I've talked about the word. Giving the right word. Giving the word in your season. Giving the word, making sure. Pastor, uh, what do you call it? Cows don't eat dry grass. Give them fresh food all the time. They will come there. I don't know what a lot of this church uh, they start. I don't know. But they hear from you, from my, from people who tell you, they start touching. That is their key. That is their to, to, to every church member to move that church. Because they are satisfied by what they see there. The right kind of leadership. Examples. Example is not only, is not just the only way. To live. I mean, that is not just one way to live. It's the only way. Christians will hear what you say, but they will do what you do. Half of prayer, I mentioned that to you. What is the Christian prayer? I mentioned it, that you see all this sort of thing. The presence of the Holy Spirit in the church. That is another very important thing. Let us not do anything without the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is always there to assist us in all we do there. That is why I read of the book of uh, Yonkicho. Yonkicho dedicated a seat like this. He said, this seat is for the Holy Spirit. Nobody there sits on that seat there. Because for him, the Holy Spirit comes to church every Sunday. Because if you read the book of John chapter 1, they said, when the children of God appeared before Christ, what happened? Their food himself came there. As we are sitting, that could be a And you hear what I'm saying. But I am joined by the authority in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That any devil that wants to trouble us in this church, the God will raise fire against him in the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. He dedicated the church. This is for the Holy Spirit. Let us honor him. Every time they come to church, for the church, they will clap for them. Let us clap for the Holy Spirit. There are so many of them like that. Another level of it is they are in one accord. Are we in one accord? The Pentecostal church, especially, they've turned into Pentecostal church. This one is going this way. That one is going this way. This one is preaching in the zone. That one is preaching in the zone. Look at the elections. A different pastor comes and says, I'm not going to who is going to be the president. And one will say, What do we need that? The same church. The church is sick. Be called. Help our church. Sacrificial lifestyle. Yes, everybody there. We have found people. Who are givers, but are we giving the right way? A lot of people become emotional when it comes to giving. They want to give because they find that they find that They say, if you want to give, uh, what call it? Uh, so go and source him of uh, ten thousand naira because Pastor Martin is too long, because Pastor Shino is too long. We two will stand up and go there. You are giving the Holy Spirit concerning your life because at the end of the day, you will not give. Go and ask them they are so many letters are here. So many promises. People who have promised, you have not promised 80 years. You have promised all. And it is predicted against you. Don't be an emotional giver. Don't stand up because Pastor Martin is too long. Take your book. There are so many times people who tell me, my dad, oh, no, no, no. But the friends are ah, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I will never next to you. Oh, she says, me, honey. Oh, shall not be? Oh, to go over. Oh, they tell me. Oh, but it's okay. Oh, thank you. These are things we need to have. So many things that I want to put to them. Reach the community with good image. Image is key. What are you saying about God of Christ Christian Church and Women? What are you saying about Pastor Timmy? What are you saying about Pastor Mark? Pastor Polanshi? If Pastor Kaji has offended one way or another, why don't you go to him? Rather than go to church members and start telling them and say, that kind of thing, I have to buy a machine. Another level of it is that even among pastors, there is suspicion. A pastor wrote something and said to me, he said, in my church, I dare not talk any longer. He is the deputy pastor. He said, anytime I want to do anything, the, my core pastors, they will go and tell the our uh, general then is it is okay, my time is up, so they will tell my general superintendent that he's doing this, and everybody won't show no show the lesson. People will feel good church in that world. And the man told me that look, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, if I leave this church today, it will be army. Please, 
I want you to be remembering our pastors in prayers. The God said, Pray them and give, give to them there. Some of you, how many times have you put hand in your pockets to say, Pastor, they will die? Do you know this person? The Bible recognizes it. That if they labor in spiritual things for you, give them in material. How many of you have ever in your life said, Pastor, they will die? I want you to change this. Many of you have your children in the children ministry. You keep them there. And they go there. You know, how many of you have ever thought that this children ministry, let me even buy 5,000 naira biscuits for them? Your child goes there and you say, Abi Yami, Gio, Gio, children ministry. These are things there. Let us, Ejekiah Maxiwa, let us sit down and think of issues like this. Now, look, this thing is not right. Until that, I cannot call it here. I hope I've not bored you. I've not had one to say the time. Thank you so much. May the Lord bless you.